We're heading back in the water, folks, and we're just gonna try to survive. Let's get it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. And today we're gonna head into the ocean once again for another aquatic horror film. But before we do that, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Join me here, great, would appreciate that. I'm gonna do a few more shark movies. I'm gonna re I'm actually gonna do Jaws 2, because I just did Jaws 3. I'm gonna do Jaws 4. And I'm going to finally create a Jaws playlist. You'll be able to check out my playlist section. Also, please join me here Friday night as Dale underscore A from the Bat and Spider podcast joins me yet again for Horror Talk Live. As we discuss that horror sequel right there, Fright Night 2. A very underseen, underrated sequel to an absolute classic. And we're going to discuss it Friday night at 8 o'clock. So please come on back and hang out with us as we talk about that very underrated sequel. Now, this film came out June 24th of 2016. It's rated PG-13. It's an hour and 26 minutes long. It had a budget of $17 million, and upon release that summer, it made 55 in America and 119 worldwide, so it was a nice size hit. Jumont, call it, Sarah directed this film. He directed other horror films like Orphan, House of Wax. He did a bunch of Liam Neeson movies, and this was his shark thriller he got to do. Now, there's some other actors in this film, but this... This movie is Blake Lively's movie, and she plays Nancy. And she's go she's down in South America, and she's going to this beach her mother spoke about. Her mother has passed away, and she's trying to reconnect with her and remember her mother by doing this trip to do surfing at this beach her mother told her about. And she gets driven there by this nice gentleman who lives nearby. He takes her to the beach. She has a friend with her, but her friend got drunk and hung over and stayed back at the hotel. So she's there, and there's a couple other guys there surfing, and she goes out, and it's a beautiful beach, beautiful setting, and it seems like a perfect day. And then a shark shows up, and Nancy gets stuck on this rock out in the water. And the water, the, the tide goes out, so the shark can't get to her. She's up on this rock, just out of the shark's reach. But the tide will be coming back in in the morning. And so Nancy only has so much time before the shark will be able to get to her. And basically how she got into this is she's out surfing and she ends up on this whale. She runs into this whale that's been, well, it's almost dead. It's It's been eaten, half eaten. And the shark attacks and she ends up getting stuck on this rock. And that's basically where we spend a good portion of, of the runtime until the, we get our finale. Um, and Nancy's just trying to figure out how she's going to get out of this. Um, it's basically a survival horror film, really. It's what it is. Um, we And this is Blake Lively's movie. And she is really good here. She is definitely one of the positives of this film. She gives a great performance. And uh, she's tough. She's resilient. She's smart. And at the end of the film, she we have this last final battle between Nancy and the shark. And she ends up killing, impaling the shark at the bottom of the ocean. Because she's been hanging out on this um, channel marker for the last couple minutes and she figures out a way to get the shark to come down and impales itself on these spikes and she gets rescued and she lives to fight another day and the movie ends with her getting ready to surf with her sister back in Galveston, Texas where she's from and that's pretty much The Shallows. What's it like about this film? Well, Blake Lively's performance, she is fantastic here. This is her movie. This whole movie rests upon her shoulders and she knocks it out of the park in that aspect and we spend the whole movie with her. I mean, the whole movie is about her journey to reconnect with her mother that's passed away and do this surfing trip at this beautiful location where you possibly can't imagine anything going wrong and even the guys that are surfing there it's like oh don't they come back while she's stuck on a rock and she goes oh there's no sharks here and they both get be, end up getting eaten by the shark and the shark is well done here it's 100 percent cgi and it's really well done in most of the scenes through most of the film the shark looks great the whale was part CGI and part practical prop that they built for the film. And that looks really good. Um, I think it, it gets really intense throughout the film. Um, the director does a nice job with that. It's nicely shot. It looks pretty. And the action, when it happens, it's nice and intense. And it's, it, it's definitely a good survival type shark horror film. Um, I think where the film loses it is in the last battle. Even though I was there for it, I, this is only the second time I've ever watched it. I just got that Blu-ray like a week ago. And the movie is really well done. And the short run time helps it at an hour and 26 minutes long. If it went on any longer, it would outstay its welcome. So it's definitely the perfect length here. I think where it kind of starts going a little bit too overboard with the CGI 
where it's noticeable CGI is during the last battle. When she sets the shark on fire, it looks like CGI. And obviously this movie only has a $17 million budget and it's from 2016. So the CGI in those scenes does not hold up. And even the final shot of the shark getting impaled, it, it's, it's okay. It's not awful. It's not sci-fi level, you know, shit show of CGI. But it doesn't hold up in high def. I will say that. I, but I was lo I was willing to go along with it. But the ending seems like the director was kind of going for that Spielberg ending in Jaws, where Sp Spielberg was like, "I'm going to have the audience in the palm of my hand. So when we do what we do to the shark at the end of the film, they're going to buy it." Here, I think it overplays its hands. It's so the ending's a little so over the top that it kind of loses everything up till that point. Seems realistic until that last part. Because this isn't an adventure film where Jaws turns into an adventure film with Quint and Brody going out on this boat. And with Matt Hooper and that, it feels like an adventure, it turns into an adventure film. It's a horror film, then an adventure film, then a horror film again. Where this film is basically just a survival horror film through the whole thing. And at the end, it kind of turns into this like popcorn over the top, you know, killing the beast. And it kind of drags the score down a little bit because it's not the ending is not even though it's thrilling it's not as good as the rest of the film from what kind of came before it all that suspense and tension that was built is kind of pissed away in those last moments for just that over the top kill of the shark but at the end of the day i still think it's a pretty solid shark it's definitely one of the better shark horror films we've ever gotten for sure and i still enjoy this film very uh, much much of the film was filmed actually in a tank with blue screen all around and they did a, they do a nice job of um, blending it nicely because for most of the movie you can't tell that it's they're in a tank. At the end, you can definitely tell that Blake Lively's surrounded by green screen for sure. They only shot ten percent of this film actually on location in Australia. Um, Blake Lively did most of her own stunts except for the surfing. She couldn't surf. She paddled, but she they had a stunt double for the surfing scenes. Um, like I said before, the shark is 100% CGI, and for the most part, the shark holds up really well until the end of the film, and then that's when it really starts showing the cracks of the limitations of the budget. Um, the shark actually only has four minutes of screen time, although you would think it has more. The film kind of tricks you into believing the shark's on screen more often, but it's not. At the end of the day, this is a really well-done shark thriller. Sorry, my son's iPad is ringing here. He's not home. He's at a friend's house. Um, I still really enjoy it. It's a really intense really well made shark film. I just think the limitations on the budget really stretch the end towards the end of the CGI and you can really tell they're in a tank surrounded by a blue screen, especially in high depth. But at the end of the day, this is still a very strong, very solid shark thriller. I would give it a seven and a half out of 10. Seven and a half out of 10 for the shallows. If you've ever seen this film, leave a comment down below, let me know. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video, I would appreciate that. I'll be back soon with some more reviews, but until next time, bye.